One of the things that I was asked to do when I started working here, our owner said to me, Ron, I want to be organic. And, you know, my first thought was, boy, we have a lot of Pierce's disease. Pierce's disease is a bacteria and it's transmitted by the sharpshooter and it kills the vines. I was interested to see whether we could invite birds to use these landscapes more by putting up nest boxes and increasing diversity on those vineyards. And then I was interested in knowing whether these birds might be helping growers by eating pest populations and offering the growers ecosystem services in the form of pest control. That first year we put up, I believe, about 25 or 30 bluebird houses in my Pierce's disease hotspots. And I was just blown away at watching that spring, the bluebirds coming. And I, to my recollection, I don't ever remember seeing a bluebird on the property before that. I learned a lot from Julie Jedleka. She came and lived on the property, did a lot of research. We looked at vineyards that had nest boxes versus vineyards that didn't have nest boxes as a control. We saw that the increase in Western bluebird abundance was 10 times as great. Western bluebirds reproduce so much in the breeding season, which overlaps with the wine grape growing season. A male and a female could give rise to 8 to 12 nestlings and help growers get rid of a whole bunch of insects. Western bluebirds are completely insectivorous during the breeding season. The whole property is 847 acres. 225 acres of that 847 are planted to vine. After my PhD, there was a whole field that was just beginning to arise called molecular scatology. They're not eating hardly any beneficial insects. They're eating absolutely no spiders. Spiders are important predators of other pests. They are eating leaf hoppers. So we found some sage leaf hopper in the poop. And those leaf hoppers are really closely related to blue green sharpshooters, which are an important insect for wine grape growers to control because they are vectors to Pierce's disease. Um, while we didn't find it exactly in the bird poop because populations of the sharpshooter were low in the year of the study, if they're eating a really close relative, I strongly believe that they would gobble those ones up too. We originally bought bluebird houses and they were expensive and I thought, Come on, we can do it a lot cheaper. So we started building them ourselves. I believe we're a little over 800 houses now. We have about 50 acres of old vineyard that need to be replanted. We went through those blocks and removed all the bluebird houses to use them, you know, when we replanted the vineyard. Where we removed the bluebird houses, started seeing sharpshooters in the vineyard blocks that had bluebird houses. I've seen no sharpshooters for years now and our Pierce's disease problem has diminished tremendously. But where there's no bluebird houses, there are sharpshooters again. I have never seen damage to the grapes from the bluebirds at all. Turkeys, yes, uh, wild turkeys, but, but not the bluebirds. So the bluebirds have just been fabulous. You know, they haven't caused any negative effect to quality grape growing. As long as the boxes are managed, you don't get any pest bird species like house sparrows or house finches wouldn't even use boxes. Instead, you get native birds that are helping. The bluebirds are my favorite. They're beautiful birds. They're all over the place and they're constantly doing their thing and living life. And they have been such a big help. You do want trees and you want native habitat, but you also don't want a lot of really harsh chemical sprays that are going to take away the food resources. Um, obviously they need to eat in order to survive and to raise young. It's a lot of fun to get away from chemicals and get in tune with nature and watch nature do what it can do for you. It's just been phenomenal.